Fishing Friends and Angling Addicts. It's me, Cricket. And I'm Charlie Weinpearl here at Bridgemaster Fishing Products in Lake Wales, Florida. You know what, Cricket? Today we're going to talk a little bit about jigs. Specifically, two kinds of jigs. Swim jigs and flipping jigs. Well, what do you have to talk about, Charlie? Well, we're going to start off with the swim jigs. And you know, there are various kinds of swim jigs. We're going to talk about what the differences are. We've got all kinds of trailers laying out in front of us. And we're going to talk a little bit about trailers. What do you think swim baits actually, or swim jigs actually imitate? Well, I know that darker ones can imitate like bluegill. Lighter ones can imitate like shad. It just matters on what you're going for. Absolutely. You know, they actually are designed to mimic various kinds of bait fish, whether it be bluegill, uh, shell cracker, but you know they also mimic crawfish moving. So that's one of the reasons why we fish swim jigs, especially on Lake Kissimmee. So let's talk about them a little bit. You know they come in various colors and various sizes from a quarter ounce all the way up to a half ounce. Miss Cricket, let me ask you a question. Why would the, the weight of a swim jig be important. What do you think one of the reasons are? Give me a couple of reasons. Well, you have the heavier ones if you need it to go deeper and so you can crank faster. To, and To get that reaction bite? Yes, for a reaction bite. Okay. And then you have smaller ones if you want it to be a little bit higher, like if they're in the grass. Correct. And so you can still go pretty fast. Yeah, Cricket's absolutely right. You know, the lighter ones are to keep that swim jig up, swim jig up in the water column. And the heavy one, heavier ones, you can do two things. You can keep it down in the water column, but what I like to do a lot of times is if they're not really biting, I want them to reaction bite my swim jig. So I'm gonna use a little bit heavier swim jig and I'm gonna crank it a little bit quicker. I want them to watch it go by and react to it. And just because he, um, it either startled him or he thought, there goes dinner, I'm gonna hit that. So that's probably two reasons why different weights are important. You talked about color a little bit. In front of us, we've got a series of light colored ones. This one here is one of my most favorite ones that I use on Kissimmee, it's made by Booyah. It is hydrodynamic. And if you look, it's shaped a lot like a triangle. So it comes through the water a lot straighter and truer. And I love the white one when the bass are in the grass blowing up on shad. Now I'll tell you a little secret that I do. They are so specific on what they're eating that the shad is very, very small. So I'll start out with a white trailer on the back, much like one of these bitter baits. And this is using very similar to what I'll put on there is something like this particular bait, or I may opt for the one of the tried and true, a little tw twin tail grub. But a lot of times I can't get them to eat it. And the reason they won't is the meal's too big. So what I do, I take the trailer completely off, throw it in the grass and I crank it as fast as I can. You're gonna get a fish to come through that grass and eat that swim jig because you didn't get a very good look at it. Okay. But um, what if they, uh, the hook like gets caught in a lot of stuff? Does that happen a lot? You know, I'm gonna tell you one thing about most all these swim jigs and that's an excellent question. They actually have a nylon uh, fiber guard that you can actually flare out if I can get it out of the childproof package. And it's very important to do that because it makes it, here I got a bit, um, it makes it more weedless. Thank you, Miss Cricket. As you can see, they're built with an extra heavy duty hook. This particular one comes with a rattle and Cricket brought up an excellent point. They all have fiber weed guards. One of the things that I do before I throw it, I'll sit there and you see how I just now fanned it out. Okay, that keeps it from getting hung up so easily. Will it still get hung up periodically? Absolutely, but that certainly does help. One of the things that I'll do, I'll actually even take my pliers and I'll open up this hook just a little bit so that when he bites down on it, he gets a lot of hook. Because a lot of times you're reeling it so fast, they'll actually hit at it and miss it. So everything you can do to help to get a bite uh, will certainly help. Since we got this one out of the package, I'll show you exactly how to rig this particular one here. This is actually your Naked Swimmer by Bitter. This happens to be a white color one. And you come through and you push it all the way up to where now you've got a totally rigged swim bait. Now I'm gonna tell you one of the most common questions I get all the time here at Bridge Masters is, 
what kind of trailer do you put on the swim jig? And I'm convinced what makes a swim jig work is not so much the swim jig, it's the trailer you put on the back. So this particular one here imitates a fish coming through the water, very long bait. This one here is a little shorter bait. A lot of times it would imitate a crawfish because of the claw type looks. And if I really want to imitate a crawfish, I love a zoom speed worm for a trailer. Now, a lot of guys on Lake Kissimmee, like you said earlier, big baits catch big fish. I'll show you what they use in a minute. This is actually a little tiny speed craw by zoom. And on the back of one of these, these little flappers are just a swimming. So if I want to imitate a bluegill uh, going through the water or even a crawfish, I'll go to a much smaller trailer, much like that. On Lake Kissimmee, a lot of the anglers are using this particular bait is made by Gambler Baits that's built here in Florida. This is actually called an easy swimmer. It's a little bit bigger bait, a little bulkier bait. That bait has a tendency to catch bigger fish. And sometimes I'll even put the big one of these on, which is actually the uh, uh, Big Easy. And in, in Okeechobee, a lot of times I put the Big Easy on there. So that's one of the things you have to look for when you throw a swim jig, is what kind of trailer you're gonna put on the back. What about line? Let's talk about line. I tell you what, let's talk about something else before we talk about line. Let's talk about rods and reels. Oh, goodness. All right, what particular rod would you throw this on? Would you throw this on a medium rod, medium action rod? I throw it on my swim bait rod. Okay, you have a swim bait rod. You actually are very fortunate. You had a series of rods built strictly for you from who? From Reaper Rod. That's right. They have two things on each one of her rods. Each one of her rods say cricket. And the other thing it says, whether or not they're a swim jig rod, a spinner bait rod, crank or a bait rod, crank bait rod, bait a bait flippings, rod. there you go. And you know what? That's really helpful, but not every company does that. So I'm going to give you some generalizations when it comes to the right rod to throw a swim jig. First of all, I think you need at least a seven foot rod. And I think a 7.6 is probably even a little bit better. And the reason I'm going to tell you it is you can actually cast further, but you can also get a better hook set. Least medium heavy. At least medium heavy. Heavy may be better. I'm going to tell you the other important thing is the particular line you use. What do you think, Miss Cricket? What would I want on my swim jig rod? Braid. Absolutely. I want braid, generally speaking, 50 to 65 pound test. And I'm going to tell you something I've learned in the last couple of years that's helped me a lot with my jig fishing. How fast my reel is. I like a high speed reel. I've changed all my reels over to 8 1 to 1 gear ratio so that I can take up slack quicker to get the hook set when he bites it. And I can also run that thing a little bit quicker if I need to. So those are some of the things. Now, will I throw it on fluorocarbon? Yes, I will throw it on fluorocarbon. A lake much like Crooked Lake that's very clear, then I like to go to 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, much like braid, doesn't stretch, so you'll still get the good hooks at. On Lake Kissimmee, when we're generally throwing this thing in grass and pads and hydrilla, um, you almost have to use braid. All right? All righty. All right, any other questions on swim jigging? And I'm going to tell you, it's all about the trailer. All swim jigs are simply designed very similar. The heads are usually a little bit different. The size may be a little bit different. But the secret is, is what you put on the back of your swim jig. Charlie, where would you get the, all of this amazing stuff? From? Well, I'm going to tell you an excellent question, Miss Cricket. You can find everything you need to go swim jigging here at Bridgemaster Fishing Products in Lake Wales, Florida. And let me tell you this. If you're too busy to go fishing, do like I do. Call in sick. <laughs>